Good morning, beloveds. Good morning to my folks on Zoom and those of us joining us on Facebook or YouTube. Good morning. Mwah. Welcome to the Albuquerque Center for Spiritual Living. I am Reverend Damani Malaika, and I am so delighted to see you and know that you are there. Um, let me go over a few logistics for my folks in person. We've got bathrooms for you if you are not aware. Here at the this end of the building behind you, we do require masks indoors, so please uh, have your masks on if you go in the building. And I think that's all the logistical things I have. Am I missing anything, Jeff? All right, excellent. All right, and um, loves on Zoom and loves on our stream. Feel free to use the comments and the chats, and we will do our best to address your needs and uh, take care of whatever we can. And thank you to Krista. Krista Keller, wave at the people who is our Zoom host today. Thank you. Let's get this thing started with a little prayer. Paul Keffey, come on up. Hello, people online. It's really an absolute delight to see you. And hello, everybody here. This morning, it's really great to see all of you. How's the mic sound? Is this better? Is it? Should I get right up on this thing? All right. Now I feel like I'm not praying anymore. <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody. Join me please in recognizing that we right now are in the presence of God. Every one of us, if you look to your left, to your right, in front of you, you get to see God looking at you, and I get to see God looking back at me, God embodying each and every one of us, God moving in, through, around, and as each and every one of us. And how good is that to know you are the residence of God as you reside within God, each and every one of us. And so today, we get to hear God speak to God. We get to hear the beautiful words of Amani teaching us about the embodiment of spirit, inviting us to experience that embodiment, inviting us to share the embodiment of spirit with each other, and to know love. And that is so good. And I am so grateful. And so I ask you all to help me anchor this knowing with one simple prayer. And so it is. So it is. Thank you. All right. Well, this is the time in our gathering together where we invite all of you and those of you online as well to put a prayer request in. If you came here today with something heavy on your heart, you've got something to celebrate. I invite you to put your prayer in the chats or the comments online. And for those of you in person, we have a candle lighting altar inside our labyrinth building. Um, and if you would like to go light a candle with your prayer so that this entire community can hold you in that prayer, this is the time to do that. You've got some ushers here behind you who can help you find your way there. There are additional masks here at the doorway if you would like to participate and you don't have a mask with you. And let us hear from the fabulous ABQ CSL players and Clarissa and Jeff, who uh, recorded a beautiful song for us that I think is perfectly in alignment with our work here together today. And I pray, I feel my heart go deeper. My heart go deeper into my God when I pray. I feel my heart go deeper. My heart go deeper into my God. Right here, right now, right where. And anybody who would like to just fill out a prayer request card in your seat, raise your hand. A 
Natasha Alex, and then we have a question for you. Yourself. Let's say that to <laughs> All right, Chris, is there anybody on Zoom? No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just gonna know a prayer that as the world continues to turn and we continue to find ourselves confronting what feels like crisis after crisis and crumble after crumble and and weather disaster after weather disaster, I just continue to know that God is in it all. And that that holy blessed one is never missing, even when it feels like we can't find it. And so let's know together right here and right now that the one is present. And we can send that knowing, we can send that divine connection out beyond our own bubbles. Anyway, we imagine someone may forget that they are wrapped in the arms of the beloved, we can send our knowing. So let us all remember that today in our time together. I'm thinking about the song, which is why I chose the song today for our topic, which is, you know, body divine, and recognizing that divine pattern of the one that is actually in our very physical being. And I was thinking about those lyrics, when I pray, I feel my heart go deeper. And I thought, you know, I think we forget. I think we forget that the place that we feel the divine the place that we experience oneness is in our bodies. And we forget that our bodies are very much part of the one. And that they're not a, a container. I mean, I've heard people call them meat suits. Anybody hear that? Meat suits. Wow, that's how you feel about this incredible thing you've been gifted with? Meat suit. Wow. <laughs> That does not feel particularly divine to me. And yet, Ernest Holmes says, our body is part of the kingdom of God, therefore there is a spiritual pattern at the center of it. He goes on to say, the body is the house in which for the present you are living, and you need to keep it in good repair by a right mental attitude, experiences, and people. Your body is entitled to your respect. 
India Ari, in one of her lyrics, says, my body is beautiful and sacred, and I'm going to celebrate it. And Ernest Holmes says, there is a cosmic or divine pattern at the center of every organ of our physical body. Our body is some part of the body of God. It is the manifestation of the supreme spirit. That is very different than a meat suit. Right? And yet I think when we take stock, which I'm going to ask you to do right now, when we take stock of the language we use, when we are thinking about, talking about, pondering, relating to our bodies, how often is it that our language matches with the idea that our bodies are a manifestation of the Supreme Spirit? So I just want you to take a moment right now and think about a thought you've had, maybe even already today, about this physical form you find yourself in. Maybe you had it yesterday, or when you stubbed your toe earlier this week, or when you weren't feeling good. What is the language you use to talk about your body? Because what we know in science of mind, what we know from all of the holy books across time, is our belief is creative. Can we all agree to that? Our belief is creative. And so when we are talking smack about our body, what are we creating? Smack. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I, I often ponder the gaps, right? The divides between what we believe or what we say we believe and what we're actually practicing. And I think our bodies is one of those places where that divide or that gap gets pretty big. And so when I'm asking you to take stock, this is where we start. We begin by paying attention to what it is we actually believe and think and say about our bodies, these temples of the divine. I remember early on in my sort of spiritual seeking, I was working uh, with this small group and I was at a workshop and I remember the teacher said, you are at the best party in town. And I was like, huh? Like, really? Like, this is the place to be? This isn't some divine punishment called earth, which was sort of my relationship to it at the time. And I remember really starting to wrap my head around the idea that this physical manifestation that I found myself experiencing called life was a divine reward, was a divine jackpot. And I was like, wow. You mean this whole thing called aliveness, being alive is actually a gift? not a punishment. That's a game changer when you really let that be true. And you really begin to make true in your belief that this whole life thing is an expression of the Supreme Spirit. And that those of us who have the privilege to have breath in our bodies right now are living one of the greatest gifts there is to live. I've heard a lot of other spiritual teachers talk about from many, many, many traditions, from many, many, many centuries, that we've already been given all that God can give. There is nothing left to pray for. And there are bees in the divine as well. <laughs> but the idea that somehow there is something missing, that there is more for God to give, 
beyond life itself. There is something slightly out of alignment with that idea. That idea that somehow we are missing something and yet here we are with breath in our bodies alive. I came across a song recently that's an ancient Hebrew song that got translated in, into English by Rabbi, Rabbi Rami Shapiro. And it's chorus is, I am alive. Die, da, da, die, da, da, die, da, die, die, I am alive. And who is this aliveness in me? And who is this aliveness in me? If not the Holy Blessed One. So I want you to take a moment, close your eyes if you're willing. And take that thought into your body, into your conscious understanding that your aliveness, your very aliveness, the blood rushing through your veins, the beating of that beautiful heart is the aliveness of the Holy Blessed One. And on that next inhale, I want you to actually feel what that feels like. What are the sensations? This holy blessed one that's animating every cell in your being. And I want you to just find a word or two that can express and describe what you feel right now. And I'm going to ask one of my ushers to come on up. Anybody? And I want to hear from you, your description of the aliveness of the spirit in your being. Grace. Grace. Peaceful. Free spirit. Cool, fresh air in my lungs. Vibrancy. All of it. <laughs> Joyful, energizing. Excitement, joyous, alive. Enchanted. Wholeness. Love. Togetherness. Any more? Wholeness. Yes. Vivacious. Alignment. Joyful, enlightenment, enchantedness. Anybody else? Burning desires. Anybody on Zoom like to share what they may have felt? 
All right, no Zoom shares. Thank you, everybody. Ah, doesn't it feel good to bring that together, to make that connection? I think we get really heady in new thought communities and science of mind communities, and we think it's all about the thought. And we forget that those thoughts are happening in our bodies. And we're living out those thoughts and beliefs in our bodies. And they are not separate from our lived experience. How many of you have ever practiced um, transcendental meditation or transcendent meditation practices? Right? Now, be honest. Weren't you trying to transcend this whole physical thing? <laughs> Weren't we like kind of looking for that escape hatch from this being alive thing? This messy, gooey, sometimes really painful experience of aliveness. I don't know about you, but I literally got into the whole spiritual game thinking I could somehow sidestep being alive. If I could just meditate enough and get like really good at prayer, I would no longer experience any of this messy life stuff. I would transcend right up out of it, right up out of it, be floating above the mess like a Buddha. <laughs> and that was entirely my motivation early, early on. I, you know, I wanted out. I wanted away from this messy body of mine that kept feeling angry and sad and, and despair. And yet what I've come to discover, it is this very, very thing that I spent all this time trying to run from that was my way to God. And that there was actually no other way. And then it occurred to me much longer into this growing awareness that this way to God I might want to like keep it in tip top shape so that I could continue to find my way to God. I might want to honor it and attend to it. Recognizing that there was no other place I was going to discover grace and peace and all of it. Who said all of it? That was Jerry. There was no other place I was actually going to have any of those experiences, except right here, in this body of mine. And I just can't encourage us enough to take that seriously. And there's not much I encourage us to take seriously in this aliveness, because Really, we should be having a party, right? Really, we should recognize, as my teacher said early on, that we are at the best party in town. But I think getting, and maybe even undoing a bit, undoing some of those ideas, those ideologies, and even theologies that encourage us to... Um, not even ignore the flesh, right? We've been encouraged to demean the flesh. Like when I say the word, it almost sounds like a bad word, doesn't it? The flesh. <laughs> I mean, how many of us were raised in some sort of idea around that, right? Like that our, that our bodies would betray us. Oh my God, all the teen conversations about what was going to happen in your body and all the evil it was going to bring you to if you let it. And yet it's the exact opposite. Our bodies are the place that we actually have a, a, a divine connection to the wisdom that many of us long to connect to. I teach a lot about, you know, trust your wisdom, find your wisdom, there is nothing outside of you that has a better answer to whatever you are going through than the wisdom that you have. Where do we find wisdom? Anybody? Our body.
bodies. Where do we experience intuition? In our bodies. So that connection we are longing for with the one, that answer, what should I do? What's the right next step? Where does that answer live? Inside of us. And I'm not speaking metaphorically. And neither were all the great holy teachers. This is not a metaphor. It is a reality, a real truth. And so when you think about that for a moment, when you think about, okay, the reality is that God is within me and my access to the wisdom of the divine, my access to the knowingness and the experience of the supreme spirit is in me. How might that change how you practice your spirituality? How might that change how you speak about this gorgeous vessel of yours? All right, I'm going to have the mic passed again because I want actual answers. All right, who's coming to get the mic this time? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. So. Let me reiterate, how might this truth, this reality, change how you practice your spirituality? Question two, answer one or both. How might that truth, that real truth, change how you think and talk about your body? Listen. Anybody else? Liberation and intentionality. It would change your practice and liberate you. And it would bring a great deal of intention to how you recognize what we are as bodies. What I've learned is to honor my body absolutely, to check on it all the time, to do a self-check to see where I'm at. And if something isn't right, then I need to go deep inside of myself to see what it is and do what I need to do to feel 100%, whatever that takes that my body is all I have, and it is my connection to all things. And so honoring it is the only way to go. Uh, to question the messages that I've heard my whole life about what happens with the body as we age. Anybody else? I'm quite demanding of my body, so to be more patient and compassionate. I'd like to invite myself into the sanctuary of my life where everything I believe is beautiful resides. I don't always invite my body there. You know, I don't always invite my body there. I, I forget how precious I really am. I was thinking that within myself and the way that I verbalize things too, that um, not just for myself, but for other women, the body image issues that our culture dumps upon us, um, and makes us unhappy with our bodies to be able to overcome that. I think that I've learned through experiencing all the different things about body image that I need to be 
proud of my body, to show that my body is an example of who I am, who my family is, who my community is, and how important it is for me to express my insides on my outside. And I think in my religious practice, I've learned to listen, be patient, and understand that everything doesn't always have to be the way you expect it to be. You just go with the flow. Anybody else? Having a body that's been around for quite a while, I uh, am learning to embrace what I experience now and appreciate all the years that I sort of took my body for granted. And now I just feel uh, uh, blessed that I've had this body. And I often feel my have a conversations with my body. It's talking to me, I'm talking back. And, uh, and also that listening part, I think it's so important. One of the things that happens, if, if this shoulder hurts, I'll talk to it, it'll talk to me, and I'll also appreciate the other shoulder for all the things that it's done. I don't want that part of my body to feel neglected. <laughs> Anybody I do a massage practice, and in, in the practice, you get to you get to teach the person how to do it to themselves. So I do it every morning. And part of the meditation is then I'll just pick different parts of my body and go through it and thank it. So maybe I do the lymphatics or maybe I do the cardiovascular, or maybe I do all the organs. And a lot of times I'll just fade off into kind of a 15 minute meditation before I get up. But it's made me a whole lot more full of gratitude for my body to actually go over parts and say thank you thank you you know and visualize you know the joints coming up from my feet to my hips or whatever and it's been very beneficial anybody else excuse me <laughs> my body vivifies that which i am Okay. Uh, I, this is a difficult one for me, but um, okay, right there. Okay, this is a difficult one for me. I have, oh, you can't still? There, there, okay. Uh, okay, this is a difficult one for me. I have to learn to love my body. I uh, damaged my body um, when I took pills and, and that's been very difficult for me to love my body. So I have to learn to to forgive myself first before I can start loving my body. Anyone else? I haven't quite figured out how to say it, but it's more like the universality of it. I've always thought my body is just something's wrong with me. My knee hurts or my, you know, I'm, just whatever but it's it's not me personally it, i think just from today it connects me to connects me to all of you in a different way like i don't know exactly what it feels like for you but it is it is us so um i don't know i'm gonna chew on that some more anybody else This is, this is like my big fear, public speaking. <laughs> but when you said meat suit, my first thought in my head was I would have picked a better cut of meat. Uh, because, and, the, and then I, I realized like I make a joke of myself all the time. And then it's like, I'll look in the mirror and like I'll hold this part of my body and think, you know, this is not right or that's not right. And then, I think of all the good things that it does. And it's like, I created that little boy right there. So I'm like, God incarnate. And I think about that, you know, if I'm kind to myself and loving to myself and not 
making myself into a joke. Like, I don't think anybody else thinks that, but I feel like that. And I wonder where that conditioning comes from. And is it society? Is it me? Or is it the messages that I've heard? I mean, there's just like a whole, a whole bunch of it. And it's like, how do you, it's like a knot. And how do you untangle that? Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, well, I listen, and I thank my body, and I love my body. Bless my body. I was going to say, and you also dance that body quite a bit. <laughs> oh, thank you. But, yeah, I would love to speak to some of what came up for folks, because I know there is not a person in this room who hasn't struggled with some kind of body image something, men and women, right? And we've inherited every single one of those struggles from BS cultural norms. They are made up, completely untrue. And yet we've allowed them to become some sort of normal. And we've accepted that as normal. And we have beaten the crap out of ourselves in an attempt to achieve a normality that's a lie that is fundamentally based in separation from the one. And do you know what the definition of sin is from the Christian tradition? Missing the mark. And you know what that also gets translated to? We miss the mark because we are separated from our target, right? And so the Aramaic translation actually means separation from the one. That is what sin is. All versions of it is when we have mistaken who and what we are. And it's not that we need to um, blame or shame this ridiculous cultural baloney I'm trying to mind my mouth, y'all. There's little people. <laughs> Thank you. Because you know that requires deep effort for me. <laughs> I am going to be gentle with myself. Thank you. Um, but this baloney that we've inherited and we've allowed to be a truth and a reality that is untrue, not real. And so the untangling that we have to do is begin to connect to the one wisdom, the one absolute truth, or as the Buddhists call it, absolute intelligence that there is. And it does not reside in cultural norm. It resides in these gorgeous, divine bodies of ours. That is the one place. And that's how we begin to entangle. You know, you shared that you can get into the mirror and begin to get into some love and gratitude, right? That's how we begin the untangling. And we do it as many times as it takes until it feels real. We change the narrative, the self-talk. And we do it as many times as it takes until it feels real. That's actually prayer. In science of mind, we call that spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. And the reason we do it is so that we can then believe it. That is actually how you change your thinking to change your life. But one of the pieces that goes with that, goes with that when it feels like we have done ourselves wrong, right? When it feels like we've been done wrong. You know, many of us have had violence perpetrated upon these beautiful bodies. Many of us have done violence to our own bodies or others. The untangling is no joke. 
but it is absolutely required to experience the truth of who you are. You know, the story of Jesus in the Bible where he healed the blind man. Does ever, anybody know that story, the blind beggar man? And, you know, it's funny. I, lo I, I love that story from the Bible because it, he was cranky when he was doing it. Like he was not like some lovely heroic guru guy who was like, bless you, my child. He was like, dude, get up. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. That is not who you are. You've already been forgiven was actually what he said. And, the, and the, 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 the meaning underneath that particular healing story from the Bible was that it was the forgiveness that that man needed to understand that he was forgiven and his sight was restored. So any unforgiveness you may be feeling or believing that you can that you've done a thing or you've had a habit or an addiction or a behavior that is unforgivable. You've already been forgiven. There is no other possibility. And unforgiveness is one of the number one ways we experience separation from the one. And it's usually with ourselves. The other piece from the Jesus story that I love about, because you know the, 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 the foundational um, root of the New Thought movement comes from the desire of folks back in the early 1900s who wanted to learn the healing method of Jesus of Nazareth. That is the entire purpose from the original New Thought movement, was learning the healing modality of Jesus of Nazareth. So those are our roots. That's how we got here. And in learning from those miraculous stories, right, in the Bible, in the Christian Bible, one of the things that became really clear was it was belief. And you know the story of the woman who reached for the ham of Jesus and was healed. He was also cranky in that moment. He was a bit of a cranky guy. But it had nothing to do with him, her healing. He had no conscious intention around her being healed at all. He was actually a little bit perturbed that she was like pulling on his gown. The healing that that woman experienced was because her belief that if she touched his hem, she would be healed. It was her belief that created the healing in her body. which is why I'm going to come back to that, that gap and that divide that I started this talk with, how important it is that we begin to close the gap between what we understand ourselves to be spiritually and what we understand ourselves to be physically. They are not different things. It is one and the same. So I want you to take a moment, close your eyes if you're comfortable, and knowing that to be the truth, knowing that to be the greater reality that we all are living in right here and right now, I want you to let your wisdom, your body, tell you what is the one place right now that I get to bring my belief in the Holy Blessed One to What ailment, discomfort, experience of misalignment in my life right now, in my body right now, am I going to bring this greater reality to you?
And when you find that answer, I would love to hold that knowing with you in prayer. So I'm going to pass the mic one final time. And for those of you who are willing to share that with the rest of us so that we can hold that knowing and that healing and that revealing of wholeness, which is how Ernest Holmes defines healing with you. Um, I'm not sure how to say it, but movement, allowing the divine to remove resistance to movement, to just moving this precious body. I do not need to feel physical pain any longer in my body. My connection is absolute, and I remain open to all wisdom with curiosity, and I receive inspiration for all things and how to manage my body and my life. I've been experiencing resistance in my left knee. And I guess I could say my left side of my body because of one of my teeth on the left side of my mouth was giving me trouble. And I was very conscious of going to the dentist when I should. So I'm going to release it and do what I have to do and just move through it. All right, so I'm going to invite all of you to take that, whatever rose for you, whatever that issue was that rose to the surface, just hold that in your heart and that gorgeous, beautiful, compassion-filled, infinite space of love that is your heart. And let's anchor this in prayer so each and every one of us get to know a greater reality. Because that greater reality, which I choose to call the Holy Blessed One, God, the divine, the absolute, the beginning, middle, and end, the place where all exists, all that we understand and can see and all that we can't, that is beyond our reach and is here right now, that holy blessed one, the greatest power in all the universe that is expressing itself right here and right now in this gorgeous thing called life and every cell, and every body, and every inhale, and every exhale, and every experience of joy and pain. I know that that Holy Blessed One is right here and right now, and it is always and only good. And because I know that it is always good, I know that that perfect pattern that we call God, that we call spirit, that we call the supreme is in every cell, in every body, in every inhale, in every exhale. There is no other possibility. And because that is what is true, I know that each of us in our holy yes, and each of us in our yes to spiritual living, welcome a greater understanding and experience of this truth right here and right now into our very body. And I know that that perfect pattern just continues to unfold in beautiful, glorious, peaceful, grace-filled ways. My gratitude for this aliveness is beyond measure, is beyond words. 
my gratitude for this aliveness with every other living being on this planet at this time is beyond measure and beyond words. How good it is to be the life of the one with all of you. Anchor this with me in prayer. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Holy and blessed. Wow. Woo! Oh, got to come back so you can see me. Okay, sorry. Um, so around here, we kick around the mission statement that we are love in action, transforming lives and transforming communities. And really, our week kicks off with the Sunday celebrations where hopefully you get a, a chance to experience spirit in you. How did we do today? Do you feel... Do you feel the presence of spirit in you right now? So then logically, what do we do with that? How do we, in community, go deeper into the ideas and the, and the unfoldment that, that Amani brings each Sunday? We do that by offering spirit groups and classes. And the practitioners and I have put together a, a, a calendar uh, where there's a spirit group every day of the week now. So if you're looking for an opportunity for connection, see me. We are um, going to close them this week. But if you're if you need if you're if you're looking for connection and a way to join a small group, we're doing that on Zoom right now, uh, and and we've all experienced this beautiful uh, appreciation of Zoom, where you know when it first started out, everybody was pretty bummed out that that's the way we had to meet. But I'm telling you, there is just magic afoot in these in these Zoom rooms. Uh, where we're getting together in small groups and carrying forward these principles and practices in a way that uh, is just making friendships. I, I've been here for nine years uh, on Amani's theme. I came here nine years ago physically, spiritually, and, and mentally telling the tale of brokenness and loss. And, uh, and it was through these groups and classes and personal interactions that my life has changed. And so I'm just in it's an open invitation to see me if you're if you're wanting to know more about that you can also go on our website under next steps and I'm leaving those those groups open the only one that is closed is the visual arts group because that we've hit capacity on that but there's seats left in those other ones and if in just see me if there's anything I can do to help you get plugged into one of those groups October 23rd starting Saturday October 23rd for 5 weeks there's a really a more in-depth way to go uh, to be in community around principles and practices. Uh, Reverend Rebecca Allen and Reverend Kamatara Johnson are, are going to put you through the paces of practice together, and it's a as a you know firsthand. That's where my life changed was in classes like principles and practices and self mastery, and where I really got to you know raise my objections to all of this and kick around you know, my false beliefs until they didn't make any sense to me anymore, really. So that's how it happens. And that's what we call uh, Spirit As Me, a chance to take what you feel here and share it with each other. Also, if you're interested in volunteering any, in any way, um, there's a team page on, on the website as well to join a team. There's all kinds of ways to get involved. And as we hopefully uh, continue to come out of this pandemic, a lot of these teams are going to be uh, getting back into, into motion. So um, I'm just inviting you into a conversation. Um, my information is all over the website. Call me if, you're, if you have any questions on how you can get more involved in classes and groups in volunteer teams. Um, there's a lot of information on the website now. So you know, go there and, and do not hesitate to reach out to me to, to figure out how what your path here might look like. So we're all blessed by your presence here. And I thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thank you, Jeff. And yeah, I just highly encourage you. Um, one of the best ways that I know, and really the only way that I know that uh, practice and, and transformation gets to happen is when we're doing it with other people. So I highly encourage you to get involved in those groups and classes. And the other way is through giving and serving. And um, raise your hand. 
those of you who have volunteered or served in this community in some way. And look around you guys, look at, look at these hands. It's meaningful, it is how we happen. And so just thank you to everybody who lends a hand and lends dollars. If you would like to make a contribution today, there are baskets and giving envelopes at the back here at the table and the ushers can help you make that happen. You can also just go to the website and click the donate button and um, do your donation digitally. And I just want you to know that it, it is what allows us to have these moments together is your financial contributions and your talent contributions. And, and sometimes talent looks like folding chairs and moving tables. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate all of you for all your help. Um, lastly, I think I just want to give everybody a heads up, including our beloveds online. Um, we are intending to move back inside into the Labyrinth building in the next few weeks. So it'll either be, at the latest, it'll be the first Sunday in November. We'll be meeting again in the Labyrinth building. Uh, masks required, we will be practicing social, social distancing, et cetera. Um, now, the thing I want you to have a heads up about is if the weather does not continue to do this beautiful, glorious thing in the next few weeks, we may move back inside sooner. And the way you will know what to expect is to receive the weekly newsletter. That's where I will be putting that information, which goes out on Thursday afternoons. If you are not receiving that newsletter, let somebody, let one of the ushers or Jeff know at the back table when we are done here to make sure we can get that corrected for you. But Thursday afternoons, that's where you want to check to see, are we online? Are we outside? Are we in person? That's, that's where the final word will be sent out. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any announcements I have forgot? Anything anybody wants us to know about? I'm going to do that now. Where's my Dino? Where's our prayer lead? The Holy One. <laughs> the Holy Blessed One. Oh, the Holy Blessed One. There you go. <laughs> I just wanted to be a Holy Blessed One as well. <laughs> well there you are, my <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, at home, I have two bathrooms, and um, in one of the mirrors, I don't look so good. <laughs> but in the other bathroom, I have a red light, and I look really good. <laughs> so before I leave home, I check myself out in that bathroom. It's really a matter of perspective, you know. <laughs> kind of fool myself there. You know, it's so lovely to be part of this community and, and to be here today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, one thing that we do have here is a lovely uh, prayer group, a prayer community that offers prayer to our community. And we have some practitioners that have been trained in prayer, and they are available for our community anytime, actually. Um, if you're in need of prayer, as Paul says, companionship. I like to think of prayer as an opportunity to companion with you in whatever you're going through. We are here for you. If you're a practitioner or someone who can offer prayer today, would you raise your hand? If you want to look around, if you need some prayer today, pick somebody. Yes, we love to pray. We also have some prayer cards in the back if you feel more comfortable. Um, indicating what you'd like prayer for. You may use the prayer cards and slip them in the prayer request box back there. And the practitioners and ministers of the center will hold you in prayer for the week. And you can also put them in the chat if you're watching online today. We also have prayer on our website. If you haven't gone to the website, it has been revamped and is absolutely beautiful at uh, prayer at abqcsl.org. You can leave your prayer there and we will pray for you for the week also. If you'll take a moment to uh, close your eyes and remember that within, with the divine within, we know we are well and we are blessed. We are not sick, God is not sick. 
And we are all the Holy One. We are all the Blessed One. We are all precious and loved and whole and complete in this beautiful day together. We hold our hearts up high so that each of us can see each other's hearts and how divine and beautiful we are in the presence of spirit. I'm so grateful that you are all here today, especially our guests. We welcome you. We invite you back. And for those that are not here, we hold them in prayer as well. Let us remember to be joyful and know that there is companionship in this community. There's always someone here for you. And together we pray. And so it is. Thanks, everybody, for being here. You are welcome to hang out for as long as you'd like. And again, any questions, prayer requests, donations you'd like to make, just head to the back table. Love y'all.